Today we're going to show you how to make an LS engine oil priming system for about 50 bucks. Let's get right to it. About four or five years ago, I had picked up a more of a professional uh, oil priming system for my LS engines. The previous oil priming system I had was a steel container about this size, and it was purposely built for priming the LS oil systems. I believe I got it from JEGS or Summit or one of those. I think it was called a T40. Worked fantastic, had all the hoses. It was a little cumbersome to, to screw the hoses on because they didn't come with swivels. Fast forward to today, I've got another engine to prime, and I went to go pour a little oil in and empty some out just to see what it looked like, and little black specks were coming out, and they were dropping pretty fast, so I'm assuming the inside of that steel canister now has rust. So I have deemed it useless. Went on the internet, and I found a few places where you can actually build your own out of a uh, spray container for around $50. You know, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I went a little bit, you could do it for less than $50, but I went a little overkill on the what, what I did with it. And I made it a little more user-friendly than my past ones. The very first thing you're going to need is you're going to need this, um, I believe it's a uh, 16 millimeter 1.5 to an eighth inch NPT. That is going to screw in the plug in your block on your LS engine. And then what that's going to connect to is a quarter inch hose barb. So we will go ahead and open this stuff up. So this is an NPT fitting on this quarter inch hose barb. We're going to screw that in. I'll eventually go put some Teflon tape on this thing to make it fit a little bit better. So that's the first part. Now what I want to do is I want to get it to where I can shut it on and shut the oil flow on and off very easily. A lot of people don't do this. I decided to take the extra $10 and get a quarter inch to quarter inch ball valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quarter inch hose to quarter inch hose somewhere past where it goes into the engine, and I'm gonna be able to turn this guy on and off so that the flow will stop when I want it to, in case, you know, as I get down to the bottom of this container, and if I've still got air pressure in it, I don't wanna push air bubbles back through the system. So I wanna be able to stop it when I wanna stop it. Now it comes to the hose. What we're gonna do is this would normally have this end on it for the wand. We are going to snip this guy off. And it is going to go in to my quarter inch ball valve. I'm gonna get another piece of hose beyond this. Now, the other thing you wanna make sure of is that you actually have some hose clamps, because you don't want this stuff blowing off when it's under pressure. So we're going to put a hose clamp on. We're going to put the ball valve on. And then we're going to come back and put another small piece of hose in here. And that's going to allow us to pressurize this system. Now, if we wanted to stop there, all we had to do is put the pump in, pump it up, and it's going to actually allow us to flow fluid up through our ball valve into the engine and prime the engine. Well, I can't leave good enough alone, so I don't want to be pumping this thing consistently. This canister will hold, by manufactured specs, 60 pounds of air. So I'm going to put a check valve in on this. And I forget what size drill bit, but you're going to have to look and see what size drill bit your check valve is going to require. I'm going to drill a hole in here and get the check valve 
put in from the inside and bolted. So I just need to pick a spot that I want to, that I can kind of reach. I want to be able to reach it. And we're going to drill a hole. Now I've made quite a mess here. I'm going to have to clean out the container. A lot of people will actually use a valve that you can actually pull up through and tighten it that way. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have one that I could screw on tightly and make sure that it's going to fit. So as part of this project, I bought a, one of these valves and it actually has a washer and a nut. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up through here. And as you can see, it seats nicely. We're going to put the washer on. We're going to tighten the nut down. And now I'll have a Schrader valve that I can actually relieve the air or put air in it whenever I want. When I get over to the toolbox, I'll tighten that thing down really good. We will go ahead and pop that back in there. And then all we need to do is fill the container with oil, hook this to the car, put about 60 pounds of air in this, more or less, and then open the ball valve and let it go. As it starts running low on air pressure, you can always air it back up. I have an air chuck that has a gauge on it, so I'll be able to tell how much air I'm putting in this. That's as simple as it gets to making the kit. We built this whole thing, as you can see, with a little bit of mess in about 10 minutes and less than $50. So we hope you found this video helpful. I will also have a picture here on where in the block this will actually screw into. And, uh, there will be another process video I'm sure out there on the internet you can find on exactly how to prime the engine. I'm going to put the oil in it. I'm going to start priming it. And periodically I'm going to turn the engine crankshaft 90 degrees and continue that through until I get about four quarts of oil in the system. And then I'm going to check the, the level of the oil and I'm going to take my valve off, plug it up, and I should be ready to fire the engine. So thanks for being with us at Full Octane. We hope you found this video helpful. And if you like our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and come back often. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Our legal team made me promise to display this disclaimer before we ended the video. Please take a moment to read it before you make any buying decisions.